I'm Steve, welcome to my workshop and to Ferric Wood Stuff. So the type of chair we're going to build here is a Morris chair, which is an old English style chair, uh, designed by a, a Willie Morris in the mid 1800s. In this instalment we're going to uh, focus on the arms and as you can see that they're, they're bent, these arms. Now there's a number of ways you can uh, address these, cut them from solid, which is hell of a waste of wood I guess. Uh, Steam bending, probably need some fancy uh, equipment for that. Or the way I'm going to approach it, which is bent lamination. So here we go. Firstly, to create the bent lamination, uh, you need some sort of mould form. So I've got some 18mm uh, MDF and I'm cutting out the, uh, the, sh the, the bend in the arm, the bow in the arm and uh, with this this will act as a template to make uh, the full form that we require I've uh, glued a paper template onto the uh, MDF and I'm just following very close the lines as you can see there's a top part of the form and a bottom part of the form Now getting it very close to the line by using the uh, oscillating belt sander. Very handy tool for something like this. Here I'm just putting some scribbles all along the edge uh, with a pencil. And then I'm going to use a flexible sanding strip which is a bit like thin plywood with some uh, sandpaper glue to it and then just follow it the profile up and down and once all the uh, pencil marks have gone it, by in theory it should be a, uh, a, a smooth surface and uh, obviously maintaining uh, the curve that we're looking for so this has took a little bit longer than I thought uh, to make in this bending form to get these uh, shapes as matching as possible so I did uh, that one the, the bottom one on the oscillating belt sander and on the uh, the top one I basically used a sanding block and some flexible sanding some flexible sanding strips try and get it as uh, as perfect as as I can it's not too bad to be honest so to make the form I need to create a few more of these uh, but I won't have to go through all the sanding bits so I'll just uh, use a pattern bit in the router table and match them up as I go along so I was cutting a, a bit more MDF and because it's MDF definitely wearing some uh, protection as well as having the air filter on and uh, obviously the dust extraction running while I'm cutting it well I've run out of uh, MDF so I've used uh, sacrilege really some ply that I had some birch ply at today's rates at the cost of fortune but anyway it's, it's, it's got a, a bit mottled so it should be all right so we need to uh, basically cut these up and glue them up and make a couple of forms sort of the, the bottom and the top so now I've cut all the pieces for the moulds uh, I'm just going to scribe I'm just going to mark out the profile and then uh, chop them out of the bandsaw. So that's the bottom form cut out and that's the uh, the top form all cut out. Next thing now is to 
to glue them up and then trim them to the uh, original templates which is obviously the, the top ones. Well we'll get on with that. So that's one part of the uh, form sort of complete. So it's rinse and repeat and do the, the top piece. I'll see you in a couple of seconds. For me, probably about 45 minutes. So that's the top piece. And there's the bottom piece. Let's see if it fits. Well, the story so far, you've seen me make these, these forms. Uh, what I've just done, I've actually turned it that way. I've actually just shaped the top of the form uh, to mirror the shape that it's needed uh, mainly because I want to clamp it across here like that I want it to pull straight down and, and not across if you know what I mean so that should be uh, cool uh, next thing is that uh, this shape probably isn't a perfect match. So to have it uh, top form solid uh, is a bit of a risk. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to chop it up into uh, about seven pieces, or eight pieces in fact. Uh, and then any discrepancy will be... Uh, Managed out easily. So, so you see, I'll put it this way. Ooh. So I've got all matching parts. So I'm just going to saw this down these lines. And then that's the, uh, the form done, and we'll get on with the lamination. So I've just been uh, into the off-cult bin and I've picked up some uh, pieces of oak which were off-cuts from uh, some doors that I uh, fitted earlier on this year. 
and basically I've just cut them to uh, they're about six inches long or 150 milli and, and I've drilled a couple of holes in what I'm going to do is actually attach them to the base of the mould uh, one it'll, it'll give me something to push the laminates up against so I'll be able to keep them uh, in line and flat and that also the end there help us a bit of like a, a handle because this uh, this form is quite heavy so we'll just attach these with a couple of screws So the final piece for the uh, form is that uh, with the lamination obviously there's going to be a lot of glue around so I don't really want to glue the arms to the form and destroy the destroy that form because it's took quite a while to make. So I'm just going to cover it all with uh, some sellotape or uh, packing tape whatever you call it and that'll protect it against any glue squeeze out, which will be a lot, I'm sure. So now it's time to uh, kick off with the lamination. First I've got some uh, some of the oak boards and I've sort of uh, done the usual to it, sort of planed it and thicknessed it, etc. Now I'm just cutting it to uh, width and then uh, We'll slice them into uh, sort of five milli thicknesses, uh, and there'll be a number of these, probably about seven or so, uh, to create the laminated uh, board shape that we're looking for for these arms. So once the first piece has been uh, sliced off, it's back to the planer with the uh, original board. Flatten that face off and then uh, repeat on the bandsaw and keep on doing that until I've got enough laminated strips for the arm. Once all the pieces are gonna be used for laminate are uh, so roughly so on it's then I put them through the drum sander to attach them to uh, the final uniform thickness at the end it gives me a, a an arm thickness of around about 25 milli or an inch So we're going to start uh, gluing up the, uh, the lamination. I'm using uh, this uh, resin wood glue, cascamite. Never used it before. Anyway, uh, it's a powder, and you mix it with water. So it's apparently supposed to be a bit like a runny nose, so I think I probably need a little bit more water in that. I don't know how. Uh, Important it is to get the, uh, the the right consistency. But uh, anyway, bear with us, and uh, next time we see you, we'll be uh, gluing along. I'll probably put it in. Uh, I'll probably put it in time lapse anyway. 
I think this is the uh, consistency we're looking at. It's a bit like PVA glue. Anyway, so it's going to be quite boring. I'll uh, show you first one and then I'll put the rest on the time lapse. To be honest, I wasn't going to show uh, this part of the uh, video because it's a total failure. But I thought I'd uh, share it with you to see how things go wrong and obviously look for any pointers. Has anybody used this cask of my stuff? Because it was a complete nightmare for me. Well, that's not working, is it? I think I'll have a rethink about this. Let's turn to porridge. So, oops, let's get it. The resin glue just kept on turning to like cotton wool. There obviously must be a knack to it that I haven't got. So I'm going to use some Type 1 3 glue, it's waterproof and it's uh, good for exterior exterior depending where this chair goes because it could be going outside or it could be going inside. Anyway I'll put you on the time lapse because this will be a bit boring. <laughs> So that's the first so that's the first one glued up. Uh, I've not got as much squeeze out as I'd like. There is a little bit but uh, around here. Hopefully it'll be okay. I was supposed to use sort of uh, I've just popped uh, a coal there to pull that up against there. I just hope it's uh, it'll be okay. I was going to use a resin glue but I just could not get my head around trying to get it right. It's a powder, you mix it with water. I'll show you my, uh, my failures uh, in a minute. So I've just gone with type 1 3. Fingers crossed. So it's the month of truth, the day after. So let's see if this uh, lamination has worked. Time to unclamp. Seems to have done the job. Sort of no spring back at all. Right, time to do uh, the other arm. So once the other arm's been sort of glued and dried and come out, it's time to. Uh, finish them off in terms of uh, squaring the edges up so doing that on the planer and to final width on the table so Finally square up the edges on the table saw using the cross cut sled 
as you can see I've just got a block holding it down because the end is flat and at the other end there's just a little bit of a wedge underneath to keep it to at the right to level so this video has gone on long enough and the, the bent lamination arms are complete uh, the next video will be uh, doing the joining around them to fit them to uh, the frame so thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and stay tuned for the next video and as a spoiler alert uh, after this chair is built there just might be a stool coming along thanks for watching